Well, hello, friends. It's Wednesday, and that means that it is time for midweek. How are you all doing? Did you get any time to play outside today? We went out for a minute, but it's pretty rainy today. So I hope you found some fun inside activities to use your time for today. Today, I'm recording my piece from our kitchen, which is one of my favorite rooms in our house. Not just because it's where we sit down to eat, but I love to make food. And it's amazing we have such wonderful food that we get to cook with. We have all kinds of wonderful treats and desserts that we can make, good foods for dinner and breakfast. We live in a time when most of us have a lot of good food options open to us. And good food is just one of the many things that we want to say thank you to God for when God provides for us. In this week's sermon on Sunday morning, Pastor Deb will be talking about our daily bread, part of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. What that means is we're thanking God that when we wake up, we have food to eat. We have what we need. God provides for us. And not only that, God blesses a lot of us with so much that we can then share with other people. God doesn't just give us what we need, but God also blesses us so that we can share God's love and good things with the people in our lives. I wonder, storytellers, are you out there? Do you know a story that you could help us understand this better with? Hi friends, I'm so excited to share a story with you today from God's Word. Now, this is a story one day when Jesus was teaching to a really big crowd. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now Jesus had been teaching for hours and hours, until suddenly his disciples noticed something. Hey, uh, Peter? Hey, uh, Andrew, shh, I'm trying to listen to Jesus. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen, Jesus. Good stuff. Pete, look at these people. What about them? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, or they will be filled. Hunger and thirst? Huh? There's a lot of really hungry people here. Uh, maybe we should uh, tell Jesus to wrap things up and send people home for dinner. I don't know. Do you really think we should interrupt Jesus in the middle of... Pete? Think about how Mom always gets when she's hungry. Oh boy, nobody wants to be around that. Now multiply that by like 5,000 people. Okay, okay, I'll tell him, but you owe me. So, Peter went up to where Jesus was teaching. Ah, uh, hey Jesus. But seek first God's kingdom and God's... Oh, just a minute everyone. What is it, Peter? Go on, Pete, tell him. Hey Jesus, so we just noticed that it's getting pretty late and these people are getting hungry. Uh, maybe we ought to let them go home and get some dinner? Jesus listened to Peter's question, but his answer wasn't quite what Peter was expecting. I'm sorry, I uh, must have misheard you. Why? What did he say? For a second there, I thought you said... You heard me right. I think feeding them is a great idea. You... Give them something to eat. Well, get going! So the disciples went through the crowd, looking for food, asking everyone if they had anything to share. I got nothing. How about you? Pretty much the same. Excuse me, I have some food. What is it? Just my lunch for today. A couple of fish and a few pieces of bread. Uh, you know, we're trying to feed a whole crowd here, kid. I'm not sure if this exactly helps. I'm happy to share if it helps. So they brought the child's lunch. Five small loaves of bread, two small fish to Jesus. And Jesus lifted them up in front of the crowd. Thank you, Father, for giving us everything we need. Everything we need? There's barely enough in that lunch for that one kid, let alone the whole crowd. Shh. 
Jesus is doing something. Jesus broke the bread into pieces and the fish into pieces and handed it to his disciples, who then handed it out into the crowd. And it just kept coming and coming more and more. Pete, we've got bread. We've got fish. And soon the whole crowd had eaten and were resting on the ground, satisfied after a great meal. And then... Hey, Andrew, um, I need some help. Help with what? Uh, Jesus said to gather all the leftovers in baskets. Leftovers? And they did. The leftovers, after 5,000 people had eaten and were satisfied, filled up 12 baskets. We serve an amazing God who not only gives us what we need, but when we share God's blessings with others, he does amazing things. Isn't that an incredible story? Thousands and thousands of people, no one had any food to share except one child who just had enough food for lunch. And when that child decided to share, Jesus made it so that everybody had more than enough. What about you? Is it, is it easy for you to share when, when you notice you have something that other people don't have, what do you do? Do you ever think, oh, I only have this much, I better, I better be careful and keep it to myself because otherwise I won't have enough. What do we do when we're afraid to share because it feels like what we have isn't even enough for ourselves? Hey, I think I have a story for that too. Wait, I'm the storyteller this week. Are you sure you just want to come in here and... When God gives you something, you need to share it with others. So, it's time for us to share another story with you. Now, hey, all of you other storytellers, it means it's time for a costume change. Uh, uh, Matt, you be Elijah, okay? So put on something that looks prophet-like. Hmm? Elijah, huh? Does this work? Great. And Hope, you're playing a widow. And Tiff, you're going to be playing her son. Now. You're both poor. Okay, you're basically so poor, you're starving. So, let's see your costumes. Here's my widow costume. Nice. Oh look, I'm a son now. Perfect. Now, there was a famine in the land. Now, a famine means that there's absolutely no food. And God's prophet was named Elijah. So God sent Elijah to another land where God said a widow would provide him with food. So he went and Elijah found the widow gathering sticks. Hello, I'm a traveler and I'm really thirsty. Is there any way you can get me something to drink? Oh, hello, sure. I'll be right back. Oh, hey, that's not too much trouble. Maybe a little of bread of bread. I'll be honest with you, Traveler, I don't have any bread, no food at all. Just a tiny bit of flour, tiny bit of oil. Just that, huh? See these sticks? I'm going to bring them home and bake one last loaf of bread to share with my son that we'll eat together and then likely starve to death. But Elijah trusted God. He knew something was up here. Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said. But first, make a small loaf for me, and make something for yourself and your son. God says this, your flour won't run out, and your oil won't run out. It will last until the day the rain comes and the food starts growing again. Now this woman wasn't from Israel. Would she trust God to save her and her son? Uh, hey mom, why are you making that other loaf? We don't even have enough for us. This is all we have but we might as well share. That man's hungry too. If you say so. So they shared their bread with Elijah. And the next day... Mom, we still have some bread and flour left. And the next... Here's another loaf. Bring it to the prophet. And the day after that... Here you are, sir. Another loaf. And the day after that... 
Thank you. God bless you for sharing with me again. And the jar of flour was not used up. And the jug of oil was not used up. This was in keeping with the word of the Lord as spoken by the prophet Elijah. Well, that was another amazing story. Thank you to our storytellers telling their stories from all kinds of different places and different homes but coming together to tell God's word, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Thank you for doing that. What did you all think of that story? What if that was you? What if you only had this much of something to share and someone asked you to share? Can you imagine sharing your very last bit of bread with someone else? Maybe you can. I know that in in this time period when everybody's stuck at home and some people are feeling really sad and, and some people don't have enough, I've watched how my friends and, and lots of God's people have, have stood up to find ways to share the good things God has blessed them with, with the people who need it. Ways people have shared the daily bread that God gives us. We have people at our church that are making sure kids have food to eat by by working with the schools to give lunches and breakfasts out to folks in the community who need it. I know some people who are using their gifts of sewing to make masks for families and, and people who don't have the ability to make or buy a mask. These people are using their gifts that God has given to make masks for them. I wonder what ways you've had people share God's gifts with you. I know at our house, We've had wonderful people coming to share generously with us. People coming by to stand outside and wave. Some of them brought things like, like cookies and ice cream and flowers. We've gotten beautiful cards in the mail and drawings that some of you have made and sent to us with wonderful notes. It's a beautiful way to share the gifts God gives us. Maybe it's a gift of coloring. Maybe it's a gift of making treats. Or maybe it's just the gift of a beautiful smile driving by on the street and waving. As you're doing your nighttime prayers tonight, I'd like you to practice that prayer. Part of the Lord's Prayer says, Give us this day our daily bread. I want you to also add to that, God, thank you for all of the good things, all of the daily bread that you have given me. Help me to see what I have enough of to share. I wonder what ways you will share this week. I'd love to see comments or, or videos or pictures of ideas you have. Maybe it's something that you're going to do for the people in your neighborhood or for your family. Maybe it's an idea that all of us can try to do to better share God's love with our community and with our city. Or maybe for you, it's a big step just trying a little bit harder to share in your family. So that's your challenge tonight. Find someone to share what God has given you with. Would you pray with me? God, thank you that you are God and that we can come before you and pray. Help us to see all of the good things, all of the, the, the daily bread that you give us every day and help us to look at it not as something we need to hoard and protect, but as something that we can share with people that you love. Teach us to be generous people. We love you, God. We pray all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next week, friends. Grace and peace. Really? Now? Ugh.